said the same thing. He's like, halfway there. And we're like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, the funny thing is that this is my, this is the most rested I've ever been for a Comic-Con because I came in Wednesday for Conan O'Brien and then like went to the Legoland and the zoo on Thursday and Friday. Yesterday I just golfed with Jensen and Rob and Bob Singer and then like I was asleep by 9, 9.30. So I got rest and now I wake up, but now I wake up and I'm like, oh man, like I'm tired. Like I'm just feeling, I think it's more being 35, not 22 anymore. Not that 35 is, you know, you know. I'm not getting a senior discount at Denny's or anything. Um, but so my age. you've been on Supernatural for many years now. Um, Most of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still think there are facets to Sam to explore? Um, and following that, what else would you like to see happen with them coming along in the next season? I absolutely think there are assets, uh, facets, facets <laughs> for Sam to explore. And just going into my personal life, but not boring you guys, what I've learned from going to therapy is that. Uh, things don't go away, you know? Um, they ebb and flow, and you can learn how to deal with them. But for instance, this season is the first time we really see Sam again at, a, at an advanced age um, <laughs> deal with his destiny because he had demon blood in him before he was a, a year old. He was supposed to be bad. He was supposed to do evil, and through nurture, he found a way to focus on being good being a good person. He makes mistakes, but he's trying to be good. And so now we see Sam saying the same thing about Jack. Like, sure, he's half, not only half angel, he's half freaking Lucifer, half human, but Dean is going like, he's half Lucifer, let's shoot him. And Sam's going, no, he's half human, let's nurture him and make him, so Sam, Sam is starting to like see himself and Jack a little bit. So we'll explore that again, which I'm really excited about because I like, because I think that's it's almost like why Sam, for so many years, didn't want to explore his power, because he, he explored his power, um, and he started the apocalypse. You know, he's been Lucifer, he's been demon, like Joseph on demon blood, and he doesn't like where he goes when he's that powerful. So he's kind of been the type to go like, hey, Dean, you, you know, you, you do this, I'll, I'll be researching in the back. I'll be like the silent but deadly one, um, which the Dean would say other things, but. Uh, yeah, so I'm, quite, I'm excited to explore that again, because it'll mean something different to him at whatever age Sam is now than he was season four, you know? Well, sorry. Are there any aspects of your character that you'd like to explore again? That, I mean, that's probably the, the main one is his struggle with his own destiny. Um, that's probably what I'm most excited about, just both as Sam and as Jared. Um, yeah, I, I liked, I liked, I really liked Jared really liked like season four not just because I met my wife and stuff but it was a it was a it was a high it was like an endorphin rush being this powerful you felt it because you're acting like it so you're reading these scripts where you're doing things and not that I was like man Jared is cool but you certainly get this feeling and it was interesting to see how Sam then dealt with it so it would be fun to kind of maybe try and full circle again I think so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think he, the kind of protection of Jack that you're talking about here, will that feed into his desire to save Mary too? Because it, in a way, it's tying. Well, into what's the chicken and what's the egg? <laughs> does he want to save Jack because he wants to get mom back and see if he can get Cass back, or does he want to save Jack because of him? Um, absolutely. That getting Mary back is a big part of, of why Sam needs to believe in her. You know? Being that we're here at Comic-Con, can you share with some, uh, something with us that maybe you nerd out about that we'd be surprised to learn? Oh, <laughs> I think I've been pretty, pretty upfront about my, my nerdness. Um, yeah, I, I was a big, I say was, I still am a huge Star Wars fan, though these days I'm watching like Paw Patrol and whatever, uh, <laughs> Bubble Guppies and whatever else. <laughs> However, I am, I am watching a lot of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles again. And I watched it when I was a kid, and so I'm showing them because my sons, like while I'm making them breakfast, the only way to keep them inside, not running around and smashing things, is to like grab Apple TV and push uh, Ninja Turtles. And so I'm like making breakfast, like I remember this episode, <laughs> like, you know, like weird deja vu. You're like, I, that's that's where that's from. Um, so yeah, getting back into the Ninja Turtles is gonna be kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I so, saw your kickstand the other day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> how was that? It was a lot of fun and an honest to god surprise. Yeah. Like I've seen a few people, they were like, "Dude, you had to know." I was like, "I no, I did not. I had no idea." 
and I was just surprised Apple sold us out. I was like, yeah, we would do keg swims on a birthday, but we, we're like, we were at work. Like, let's not talk about it. <laughs> uh, granted, we would start at the end of the day and stuff like that, but it was a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Yes. And I, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anybody else has done a keg stand on a late night talk show. <laughs>